Hello, in this video, we'll be covering k-means clustering, plus advantages and disadvantages. Clustering is a type of unsupervised learning because it can group unknown data through the use of algorithms. Clustering is used to determine trends and patterns in sets of unlabeled data, and usually groups sets of data together by using a centroid and distances from the centroid to other points. Clustering will be explained more thoroughly when discussing unsupervised learning algorithms, such as k-means and density-based clustering. From learning these algorithms, you should gain a better understanding of what clustering is. Clustering is a type of unsupervised learning because it can classify unknown data through the use of algorithms. Clustering is used to determine trends and patterns in sets of unlabeled data. It usually groups sets of data together by using a centroid and examines distances from the centroid to other points. These centroids are initialized randomly. The data is then grouped with the centroid based on distance. The centroids move to the average distance of all points to the centroid. The points are reclassified and the centroids move again. This continues until the centroids no longer move. Please note that whenever a centroid moves, each point's distance to the centroid needs to be measured again. Now, let's define the algorithm more concretely. A k-means algorithm works by randomly placing k-centroids, one for each cluster. The farther apart the clusters are placed, the better. There is no specific number of centroids that you need to have. This is based off of how many clusters you want to find. Therefore, there will be a centroid for each cluster. The next step in using a k-means algorithm is to assign each data point or object its closest centroid, creating a group. Euclidean distance is used to measure the distance from the object to the centroid. Note, however, that you can also use different kinds of distance measurements, not just Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance is used because it's the most popular. Next, once each data point has been classified to a group, recalculate the position of the k-centroids. The new centroid position is determined by the mean of all points in the group. Finally, as noted on the previous slide, this continues until the centroids no longer move. For simplicity, this example will be looking at k equals 2. In other words, the algorithm will be creating two clusters. One cluster will be blue, while the other will be green. So, these are the unlabeled data points in 2D space. We want to create two clusters, so we need to start off with two centroids. As you see, they've been randomly placed here. A good way of determining which points belong to which centroid is by first drawing a line to each centroid. Then we need an orthogonal line that intersects this line in the middle. As you can see, everything to the left of the red dotted line is considered blue, and everything to the right of the line is considered green. Next, we need to recalculate the position of the centroids, which result in the centroids moving to these locations. Once again, let's get the line that separates the two centroids and see the perpendicular line that separates them. At this point, we only see two points that need to change from blue to green. So, let's get rid of these lines to see where the centroids need to move now. Now they'll move. And again, we need to see if anything will change. So the two lines move once more. So now we see that there are no points that change. Therefore, the centroids will not move anymore, which means that the algorithm is finished. There are two main advantages in using k-means. First, it's easy to understand. And second, it's very fast compared to many other clustering algorithms. K-means also has some disadvantages as well. First, it has no specified initialization of cluster points, and it has a high variation of clustering models based on initialization of cluster points. Second, getting accurate results depends on distance measuring metrics. And finally, there's the possibility of a centroid not having data points in its group, therefore not being able to be updated. Thanks for watching.